Yes, man. Yes. Yes. This Eagles game was the ugliest preseason loss I've ever seen. Yes. There are things coming out of this game that concern me about our birds. And yes, it's preseason. And like we always say about preseason, good or bad, you got to keep it in a proper perspective. Yo, everybody, how you doing? King Dingbat here. So today we have come with the... It's a big ass dog. Dallas still stinks. You're by doing King Ding Bat here, and I hope everybody's having a great day. Hope you guys are doing well. Hope you're hanging in there after the destruction of the Eagles last night. And that was, by all accounts, the worst preseason game I've ever seen the Eagles play. But that's what it was, a preseason game. We can't forget that. And we're going to get into this whole thing in a minute. But before I do that, I got to say this. If you have the Newsbreak app, maybe you want to get the Newsbreak app, click the link in the description, give your boy a follow. I would appreciate it very, very much. And um, also, I want to thank all the people that were in the live stream yesterday. It was huge numbers for preseason. Uh, can't believe it. Even through that debacle, you guys were with me. Uh, thank you so much. Had a great, great time. Now, Getting into this preseason game, right? The whole thing is just weird by the start of it, okay? Um, you, you you go, we're getting ready for the game. They're showing Jalen Hurts. He's warming up. He's throwing the ball. He's dancing around. He looks like he's ready to go. And then the game starts. Eagles get the ball. And in comes Joe Flacco. And you're like, what the hell happened? I didn't even know that Joe Flacco was coming in. I didn't know Hurts was sick until Flacco was actually in the huddle. And then people start saying, oh, he's sick, he's sick. And, you know, <laughs> at least in my stream, the first reaction is, wait a second, he's throwing, he was dancing around, he looked fine, now he's not playing? Is he really sick? What is really going on here? Uh, you know, some people were speculating in my channel. I, 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 I love conspiracy, so I have to entertain all possibilities. They're like, did they trade some? Did they trade him? And we we're like, nah, probably not. Did Howie call Nick Sirianni and say, you're not playing Jalen Hurts? You know, that's what I was leaning towards because I was like, I mean, it was just weird. It was a weird situation, weird way to start preseason, uh, a preseason game. However, it turns out Jalen Hurts was sick. He has a, a stomach infection or some sort of something like that. Goes to the hospital, gets checked out, comes back, uh, and he is going to be out a couple days. So he was sick. That's what happened. And uh, what, what are you going to do? These things happen. But it was just a weird kind of how it went down and all those kind of things. Um, my immediate reaction from seeing like the first couple plays was, uh, where is our starting offensive line? Where is our offensive starting line? Then it was like, well, wait a second, on defense, where's our starting defensive line? Where's our backup defensive lineman? Like, the Eagles were not playing uh, a lot of their starters. I mean, a lot of their starters were not playing. And it was, like, weird because you're thinking, all right, with three games in the preseason, you're going to have game two be your dress rehearsal. Then you sit guys uh, week three. But the Eagles didn't do it. What they kind of did, and I, I, I look... I liked a lot of the things Nick Sirianni has done so far. I like it. This did this kind of I didn't like. I, I'm not gonna lie to you. I didn't like the strategy last night. I don't know if it changed because uh, Jalen Hurts didn't play. But you know, you have Flacco coming there, a guy who's older, who is a, not a mobile quarterback, and you don't give him a starting offensive line that could protect him. He, the offensive line, the starting offensive line, should have played with Joe Flacco to protect him, okay? They had no problem keeping out or keeping in their starters at wide receiver. That was what was weird about it. It was like uh, wide receivers, linebackers, the starters are playing. But defensive line, offensive line, most of the secondary, like backups, all backups. It was weird. I would have rather see you do the whole offense group plays the whole game or half the game as starters. So all your starters play together. All your backups play together. I would have rather seen it that way, but it is what it is. And the Eagles, they got destroyed because the New England Patriots came out and they played their starters. Their starting offensive line played in the first three drives of the game. Okay, they scored points, I believe, every one of those drives. So our like third string defensive line was going up against their starters. 
what do you think is going to happen, okay? And I want to go over some of these, um, I want to go over some of these snap counts right now because they have the snap count. I'm not going to go ever, over everybody, but I'm going to go over some of these because they're very telling. It's very interesting. Uh, I'll leave the link in the description so you guys can check this out yourself. But the guy who got the most snaps on offense yesterday, let's see, maybe on defense too. Yeah, the most snaps out of all the Eagle players was Nate Herbig. Nate Herbig played... It looks like he played 100% of the snaps, okay? Second most snaps was was Matt Pryor. Uh, he had 87%. Then you had Toth. He had 79% of the snaps. Opeta had 66% of the snaps, okay? Then you had Stahl with 58%. That was kind of uh, because injury, right? You had Kroom who got hurt. He looks like it's a serious injury. He's going to be out a while. Um, and then Flacco had 50, 57% of the snaps. Driscoll, 57% of the snaps. What's interesting was, like I said, the wide receivers, had they played a lot yesterday. Watkins, he had 57% of the snaps. Devontae Smith, 49% of the snaps. Rager, 42% of the snaps. So they had no problem playing their starting wide receivers. But clearly, you can see that they didn't start their offensive linemen. I mean, I mean, your whole offensive line was pretty much out. Now... Jordan Mulata and Sayamalu did play a little bit. They played a total of six snaps each. They played six total snaps. The Patriots offensive linemen had three series. They had six snaps. Okay? Zach Ertz had three snaps. Miles Sanders, four snaps, four snaps. Dallas Goddard, four snaps. Um, like I said, Sayam Sayamalu, Mulata, uh, six snaps each. Uh, Jordan Howard, six snaps. Now, here's what concerns me about the offensive snap count yesterday. Why the hell, why the hell does J.J. Arceg, a white side, have only eight snaps? He only played 15% snaps on offense yesterday. He had eight snaps. How, how good do they think this guy is? He should have played 100% of the game. He stinks. This guy cannot make this team. If, if he does... Ah, that is really, really bad. I mean, Hightower played 25% of the snaps. Fogum played 26% of the snaps. Fogum didn't even get any snaps in the first half, I don't think. Um, so that concerns me a little bit that Arthago Whiteside would only have eight snaps. Are they really that high on that guy? If he makes his team, I'm going to be pissed. I'm going to be pissed, you know? So, you know, it, it, it really, it, it, it's something else, man. Um... Let me see, Kenneth Gainwell, too, because Kenneth Gainwell played really good last night. And Gainwell had 28% of the snaps. I thought Kenneth Gainwell had a really, really good game last night. Um, I'm trying to go to defense here. So, then on the defensive side, side of the ball, Sean Bradley had 68% of the snaps. Uh, Zach McPherson, who got destroyed yesterday, got destroyed. He had 65% of the snaps. Okay? Um phew. I mean, these guys really didn't play. A lot of them. Avery had eight snaps. Steven Nelson only had nine snaps. Uh, Maddox had nine snaps. Uh, Slade didn't even play. No, None of your defensive starting defensive linemen played. No, most of your backup linemen didn't play, okay? So, uh, and then Kevon Wallace, he leaves early after re-injuring his uh, groin, which is never a good sign. But, I mean, let me see this. Alex Singleton. Now, I'm going to talk about him in a second, but Alex Singleton, I want to see how many snaps he had real quick, because I forget. Singleton had 20, Alex Singleton had 24% of the snaps. He had 19 snaps. He was by far the best player last night. Alex Singleton, uh, baby arms, Alex Singleton, Popeye as I call him. Uh, he, he had, he had a great night. He is turning into a legitimate linebacker, okay? Out of the 19 snaps that he had, he was dominant. It seemed like almost every snap he was in on a tackle, in on a play. Uh, Alex Singleton is becoming a real good player. And one of my favorite linebackers. I call him baby arms because I think he needs to get bigger. Got big uh, big forearms. I don't know how. But, you know, little biceps. So, it is what it is. But um, they, they didn't play anybody yesterday. Uh, this is my point. They didn't play anybody yesterday against a team that was playing their guys. So, yes, they took a beating, and um, it is what it is, but they didn't play anybody. And that's how I kind of feel about this game. So, yeah, it's upsetting that they lost and they got killed, um, but they didn't play anybody. What's more concerning to me about this game yesterday was that it showed clearly, especially, I will say, defensively, 
on defense. This team has no depth. This team has no depth. And that is the biggest problem I see for the Eagles going forward. You have injuries, especially on the defensive side of the ball, especially in that secondary, on that defensive line. You got no depth, man, because their backups got destroyed. They got destroyed, and, and it was a brutal night. Now, uh, I, I've liked a lot of the things Nick Sirianni has done this year. Didn't like the way he went about managing this game. I didn't like it. I thought, it, you know, just from seeing him on the sideline, he didn't look like... I don't know, he just he didn't seem like he had the energy. The whole team didn't seem like they had that same energy as we've seen all preseason from him. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it sucks. And to me, the thing that scares me the most is the depth. Because the Eagles have been hurt year after year, year after year, year after year. And what has happened? Um, we've had people on the depth chart rise up and be decent and help contribute, get us into the playoffs. You know, uh, last year it was just too brutal. What's going to happen this year when you guys, when guys get hurt? If if a, a Josh Sweat, Derek Barnett, what if they go down? Who who are we going to have at defensive end? So I think that being concerned about the depth and what we saw depth wise from this team is fair. It's a concern. It's something to worry about. Um, as far as losing third, what thirty-five uh, nothing competition, how we played. I mean, we had all backups in, and and to me, that's how I kind of look at it. So yes, I'm concerned about the depth of this team. No question about it. I didn't like it. Uh, anybody that thinks Flacco is going to beat out Jalen Hurts, it's not happening. Although I didn't think they did Flacco any favors. If you're gonna have a guy who's immobile, can't move around, if you're gonna have him go out and sit there and <laughs> you know, basically um, run for his life when he can't run, uh, he's not going to play well. They should have kept the starting offensive line out with Flacco, and let's see what he could do. So, overall, disappointing night, a very hard game to watch. I'm not going to have fun watching it back, which I'm going to have to do. Um, however, uh, you know, the depth of this team is a concern, no question about it. The the players, the starters not playing and playing all your backups versus their starters. Um, I mean, because before their starters even went out, I think it was like 19 nothing. So it is what it is. I'm not so concerned about the score or the loss. I am concerned about the depth of this team. Um, but at the end of the day, it is a preseason game, and we have to keep it in perspective. So those are kind of my final thoughts on this game. Looking forward to moving past it. We got some other things going on. Andre Dillard news uh, we got to talk about possibly him being traded and moved. That'll be coming up in the next video. Uh, with that said, take care. Talk to you later. Of course, don't be a dingbat. One of the main things I wanted to talk about in this video that I almost forgot was Devontae Smith. I got so tied up in the snap counts and what was going on that I almost forgot to talk about Devontae Smith and his debut. How could I forget that? But I got this in, so at least you're going to hear it here. Devontae Smith, to me, okay, the one great thing that came out of yesterday uh, in his game was that he pops out. He pops out of the screen. When you watch and he's on the field, you can't help but have your eyes be attracted to where he is. He is so talented. He moves so well. He runs amazing routes. His route running was superb last night. On the two catches he had, go watch his route running. They were absolutely fantastic. Uh, you can't help but look at Devontae Smith and know. And you know, you know, this guy's a total stud. This dude is the real deal. That's the one thing you can see by just him on the field, running around, running routes. He runs great routes. Uh, he, he, he's next level. Okay, he is going to be a stud, no question about it. Um, he did drop a couple balls. Um, two were his fault, in my opinion. First one, he did a slant. It kind of, he kind of looked like he caught it. It looked like it got knocked out. The other one was a back shoulder throw by Flacco. I think you got to catch that. I think you got to catch it. But he was rusty. He hadn't played in a while. Coming back from injury, maybe he was a little nervous. I, I, I'm not so concerned about the drops. It's not a big deal. The most important thing about Devontae Smith, and what I liked most about Devontae Smith, was Devontae Smith, you can just tell by his route running, his speed, the way he carries himself to play, that he's next level. He is a next level stud. No question about it. So Devontae Smith, to me, was a great debut. Uh, he showed to me why he was the 10th overall pick and why the Eagles got an absolute steal 
at wide receiver. I wish I would have included that earlier in the video, but I forgot. But at least I included it now. With that said, take care. Talk to you later. And don't be a dingbat.